sciences, the researchers are creating genetically modified silkworms. One product of the lab that made headlines around the world is a silkworm that glows brightly under blue light. The secret of this fluorescence is borrowed from the jellyfish Equaria Victoria. The genes that produce its glowing compound were inserted into silkworms to make them glow too. Using genes from corals, sea anemones and other creatures, Various fluorescent colors have been produced. The fluorescent silk from genetically modified silkworms has been used to develop products such as this concept wedding dress. This silk is also eco-friendly. Our green silk is intrinsically green. Same with our red and other hues. No dye is required. By eliminating the chemicals that are released when dyed fabrics are washed, environmental impact is reduced. At this laboratory, researchers are trying to create the ultimate silk. These cocoons were made by silkworms modified with genes from other species. Here's an experiment comparing the break strength of the new silk with regular silk. As the same forces are applied to each, the new silk shows 50% more resistance to breakage. It utilizes genes from the all-weaving spider family. Well, spider silk interests scientists around the world because it's so strong. Stretching without breaking is a desirable property. This new silk with increased strength and suppleness could be used for stockings that won't run and clothes that won't rip. It may become the ultimate 21st century fiber. Silk is also in the spotlight as a promising new material in medicine. Researchers are developing new therapies not possible with other materials. These are artificial blood vessels made from silk proteins. They're slimmer than conventional ones. The ones on the left have a diameter of just three millimeters. Notice how elastic it is, and yet dense enough that it won't leak when full of blood. Existing artificial blood vessels are limited to large diameters because blood tends to clot up inside narrower ones. But if they are made out of silk, cells will usually coat the inside as they do real blood vessels. That makes clotting less likely and allows the vessels to be narrower. This innovation should prove valuable in treating children who need narrower artificial blood vessels. And here's a film made by breaking down silk fibers. Not only clear and strong, it is well tolerated by the human body. Researchers hope to use it for artificial corneas that can adhere tightly to the eye. Silk has been used to stitch wounds together for many years, so we know the human body tolerates it well. And is very strong. Silk's properties are ideal for regenerative medicine. Really well suited. Silk is not just a fiber for fashion, but also medicine and other fields, as its properties find new uses. Okay, we have a number of different items here, and I'm guessing that they probably all connect to silk in some way, but I have no idea how. We looked at cocoons earlier. We saw how they were used. Silkworms make them. What does silk look like before it's secreted? This liquid. Oh. This liquid is turned instantly into a filament as it's secreted. Oh. And it has potential to be processed into many products. This stuff is actually silk. And it's edible. But no taste, no odor. It melts in your mouth right away. And what effect does that have? A cocoon has various foreign materials in it that generate odors. The cocoon absorbs.
absorbs the odors. We say it's absorptive or adsorptive. It binds odor molecules, oil molecules, and so on. So it can adsorb oil such as neutral fats and transport them to excretion from the body. And keep in mind that as silk is reeled into thread, some material is always discarded. For example, scrap thread and cocoons which have been cut usually end up as waste. What if that waste could be used in non-textile products like these? A new form of recycling. A circular system. It would be a step towards a zero emission silk industry. That's a real possibility. It's been fascinating. Thank you very much.